So welcome rocket fans back to the uh, Copenhagen Solar Rocket Shop and our current affairs. Um, this is a long overdue current affairs and we have a whole lot of stuff for you. Um, so we'll simply just skip right into it. I'm standing here with uh, Thomas Peterson, our flight, and uh, he'll be uh, taking us through many of the different projects we have uh, currently going on. So Thomas, we, uh, we, we announced uh, Speaker Rocket lately after the next mm -hmm. two launch. Speaker Rocket, Speaker Rocket, this giant rocket that's going to take our astronaut uh, to the edge of space beyond and, and back home again. And uh, it's a monster rocket and it means that a lot of new initiatives needed to be started. So one of the projects that you announced was the BPM 100 in 100 days. So can you give us a little background for that and, and what the intent of this, this effort is? Yeah. So the BBM-100 is of course the engine that will propel the speaker rocket. And so the idea of, of the project is, was really to, uh, to kickstart ourselves, to launch this BBM-100 in 100 days. Uh, I never really firmly believed we could build an engine in 100 days, but the, the idea was to, to kickstart ourselves into high gear, to, uh, to get as much work as, as we possibly could. And uh, so we're still in the design phase of the engine, and then we'll talk about some of the, uh, the, the parts of it. And uh, it was really just to, to kickstart ourselves into to high gear. Yeah, well, on the other hand, it's, it's, a, it's somewhat much different from what we did on the uh, next two class rockets. I mean, this is a giant rocket, it's a giant engine. There's a whole new set of, of things we need to take into account here. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been looking through some of, the, uh, some of the different projects that we're going on. And one of, the, one of the main outcomes of this is that we have a highly active booster design group right now. Actually, they're more or less drowning in projects, but they're making good efforts, good speed ahead. And we just, I just want to go through a number of the different projects we do, because uh, we're actually changing a little bit technology on this uh, speaker engine, the BPM-100, because we're going from, from what is commonly known as a showerhead injector and going then into coaxial swirl injectors, which is something we haven't been doing before. What's, uh, what's with this? Yeah, so to, to make a showerhead injector in, uh, in a BPM-100 size would be a bit challenging, uh, very time consuming. A few thousand holes and just one needs to go wrong, one broken drill and yeah. Yeah, and then you would be a bit in trouble and to have to do a patchwork and stuff. Hmm. So, so we have changed uh, technology a bit. Um, so we are going with the swirl injectors, or coaxial swirl injectors. Uh, much like on you'd see on many Russian rockets, mm -hmm. uh, rocket engines. Just to get the, the brief, uh, the briefest part of it, coaxial swirl injectors. Can you just take us very shortly yeah. through how does that actually work? So it works by you have uh, probably a hundred or two hundred elements mm -hmm. inside the, the uh, engine making up the injector, and each element has two streams. So mm -hmm. it has both the fuel stream and the oxidizer stream, and they each come out in a in a in a cone in a cone, and um, then they, uh, they hit each other. So the two streams, the two cones form one cone. So we have these uh, cone streams that uh, collide and, uh, and atomize. Yeah, so as far as I understand it, we have two concentric cones, and if we're really good at getting it right, we can actually make the two cones at different angles, so we actually make them collide. And then, as I understand it, coaxial swirls can be done in two uh, ways, because you can actually have those two concentric cones counter-rotating. Yeah, so, so the cones are created by the, the, the liquid is rotating. And so you can rotate them the same, same way or you can rotate them uh, the opposite ways. And it's not really clear to us uh, yet which way we'll go, uh, but we're making a, uh, some tests about it. So the idea is that we will uh, design this coaxial swirl element, uh, which has a very basic geometry. So it's something you mill on a, on a lathe and with, uh, make a few holes in from the side on a, on a drill. So the uh, that's just a single coaxial swirl element to start yeah. with. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So we'll make a single coaxial element, and we'll make it out of brass, mm -hmm. and uh, so then we can silver silver solder it together, and we'll make this single element, and then we'll test it. So we're building a small test rig where we can do uh, flow analysis, so we can uh, characterize flow through it as a function of input pressure, mm. and we can also visualize how the uh, the cones will collide and how the streams will atomize. I take it that this is not done with propellants. Yeah, so this would be done with water. Mm. So, uh, so we always do flow tests with, with water. And so it's not that we are going to, uh, to do a lot of atomization studies. You know, if you search in literature, you'll fi find that uh, people, the pros, they do a lot of atomization studies with really fancy equipment mm -hmm. and they will study 
you know what uh, how many micrometers each uh, micro droplets is going to be we're not going to do that high speed cameras and all of this yeah, fancy it, it stuff it can get very fancy mm. and we're not going to go very fancy we'll do it uh, with with i mean we'll record it on the cameras so that we have and visually inspect how the atomization uh, appears to be the big test about how the atomization really is is, is not going to happen until we light an engine with it mm. but we'll make a, a test setup for flow characterization. Yeah, that's the, that's the major part of this. The whole idea about taking one single injector element, manufacturing it how we want to do it, then subjecting it to a water flow test mm -hmm. and actually making sure that the, uh, the different propellant pressures we thought we would run with against the, uh, the chamber pressure in the engine itself, actually that we can verify that we get that amount of propellants in the right mix that we're looking for. That's the biggest, uh, the biggest takeaway from a water flow test. Yes, it is. It so. definitely is. And so, uh, compared to the shower head injector, this also has uh, an advantage that you can uh, most likely throttle the engine deeper, mm -hmm. which is interesting on speaker because if you don't throttle it, then around uh, main engine cutoff, the astronaut will be pulling 6 Gs. If you don't throttle it down, so we would like to be able to throttle it down mm. to 50% to thrust in the end, probably. And uh, it also has a smaller pressure drop mm -hmm. than a shower in injector, such that uh, we can actually run the engine at a, I mean, comparably, we can run the engine at a slightly higher pressure than we would be able to with a shower head injector. And they're also rumored to be rather efficient. I mean, mm -hmm. this counter rotating, small droplets and good mixing and stuff. So. Yeah. They're, they're pretty popular and, and supposedly they're doing a pretty good job in making efficient engines here. Yeah, so on the BPM-5 engine, uh, efficiency-wise or specific impulse-wise, we ended up at something like 190, 195 seconds. So compared to the optimum, which would be? So optimum, that's I think uh, 220. Okay. So, so we're, I mean, we're, well, we're somewhat it's, below that. It's just in, in your opinion, if we got pretty close to an efficient engine, or if so, it, it's within the range we were hoping for. Okay. But I think with swirl injectors, we can probably bump it up a couple of percent. So it actually means the same performance for less fuel. Yes. Hmm. Exactly. So more lift for the same fuel. Okay. So when we have characterized one of these swirl elements using water, and we we know we got the manufacturing uh, uh, process under control and everything, so what's the next step after that? Right, so after we got one element right, then we, we would like to test it in a small scale mm -hmm. before building a, a full-scale BPM-100 engine with it. So we're actually implementing the swirlers in our BPM-5 engine. So we're making an injector redesign mm -hmm. on the BPM-5, and we're making it sort of as a, as a replacement uh, so drop-in swap, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. such that we can make an injector with swirlers mm -hmm. and just drop that in instead of the regular shower head injector, and then we can run a BPM-5 engine with it. And more importantly, we, I guess we can compare all the data afterwards? Exactly. So we can see if we get a, this, this slightly higher efficiency that we're hoping for. We can see uh, how the pressure drop is, if it's lower, as we also hope. Mm -hmm. And uh, moreover, we can test a couple of different configurations. So on the uh, BPM-100, uh, heat management is, is going to be a, a big part of it. So you typically have a fuel-rich uh, outer line. Yeah, to keep the walls more or cooler, at yeah, least. Exactly. And so that is something that we might choose to play with a bit on the BPM-5. Mm -hmm. to, uh, to change, either to change the outside swirlers for some that are slightly fuel rich, or simply implementing a, a shower head like uh, fuel ring at the edge in the injector. So that will become like this cooling curtain of fuel, or film cooling, that where fuel just actually flows down along the sides of the chamber on the inside, even though it's a rocket engine with a huge amount of energy being fired off, we could at least see from our TIOS experiments that deposited this white layer of, of silica on the inside of the engine that the film cooling is actually just f flowing down the wall itself. Yeah. And, and especially because we have so much uh, data from the BPM-5 engines, we will be actually, we'll be able to do some, some pretty good uh, studies into how do we get this huge BPM-100 injector right yeah. in the first go? Exactly. So there's a couple of steps until we get there. So we uh, finalize the design on the element, we test it in water, and then we do the BPM-5 test. So will there be any change to the performance of the engine? Do we run it nom uh, nominally as we used to? And then how so many in injector elements can we cram in there? 
so I think we can cram in up to 19 uh, in the uh, in the current uh, design, and um, and I think that's that's a nice representative number of, mm -hmm. of what we will see on the BPM uh, 100. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's going to be really interesting. And uh, BPM again, BPM five doing something it had no idea it was supposed to do mm -hmm. before that. Yeah. Okay. CS is doing rocketry at a shoestring budget. Uh, it's laughable compared to the established business. And we are immensely thankful for all you supporters that uh, help us do it, make this possible. So please keep on donating. Please uh, donate to Cops Up, and if you know anyone, maybe even a business that might think this is a crazy and cool project that you can get in on it, try them as well. The speaker project is huge, and you guys are the ones helping us realizing it. <laughs>